Hey everyone, I'm just making this video to go over some designs with you of daily work. Just the kind of uh, nitty gritty stuff that I'm doing on a daily basis. This isn't the uh, the picturesque, you know, beautiful eight unit anterior design. Everything went perfect. This is, you know, just daily work. And I'm going to run through a couple of these cases with you guys just to give you an idea of, um, you know, what I'm doing and maybe you guys can learn something from this uh, based off of like how I handle some of these designs. So here's a case, uh, just the four anteriors. Um, you can see what we're dealing with here. This is an older lady, um, excessive wear. Um, and unfortunately there's a pre-op scan, but um, you can get an idea of the you know, direction we were going with this design, wear marks along the incisal edge. Um, and I had to level with the dentist on this case um, and understand the patient's expectations more in order to even proceed with this case because um, at first glance, it looks like nothing can be done to help this patient out. But um, realizing that the patient's expectations weren't all that high and that she just wanted some sort of improvement, that gave me more confidence in, um, in being able to accomplish um, what this patient and the dentist wanted. So um, I'm giving you guys a look at the preps here. You can see that there is significant space between these preps and I don't know how much the tissues retracted, but you can see it's gonna be hard to make an emergence that um, looks natural, appears natural, but also um, eliminates black triangles. And it was difficult to eliminate black triangles in this case, just because of the distance between the preps and uh, where the margin lies. But, um, you know, maybe this tissue is retracted and it'll fall into place and look nice, but I'm sure we'll have some black triangles there. Did my best to close them up right here. Um, and you could see that the preps are, if I completely take away the design, you could see they're somewhat, you know, just protrusive and um, sticking outward. Uh, this is nothing uh, that is, say, the dentist's fault. This is just the reality of a lot of these cases and the existing dentition that we have to work with. Um, you can't make everything uh, a home run, but uh, from my understanding, patient was very happy. Um, dentist was very happy. Um, there was no way to close up this diastema, and I recommended leaving it open just because that's going to actually make it appear more natural and even balanced. It's going to make it appear more balanced because we've got a diastema over here. So it was, you know, a good call to leave this open. Um, if you were to try and close that, you'd want to do it from the lingual, and there isn't much room to even do that, um, close it up from the lingual. And even if you did, any side profile view or glance you get of this patient, it's going to look pretty funky. But um, this is the first case, and I'm going to go over a couple more with you guys. But uh, anything that I would have done different with the prep design, um, is there anything I would have done different? No. Um, there's only so much you can do. And, you know, you got to just do your best to make chicken salad out of chicken. <laughs> and I think that we did a great job with that. Um, you know, the, the dentist and I, it turned out really nice. Um, given what we had to work with. And as far as the design, what I did to achieve this uh, morphology and whatnot, I pretty much just went into biogeneric variation. Um, I, uh, I brought it out to about, let's see if it shows it here on the screen. Oops, it eliminated the design. But um, I brought it out to about 80-ish, um, 90-ish. Here, I'll show you guys, you know, the, the kind of proposals we have to work with. So I brought it out to about, to about there. And I'll explain what was done after um, we received the initial proposals. So here are the initial proposals. You can, you can see what I mean when I say we made chicken salad out of chicken. Um, we weren't, we weren't given the best, um, you know, the most ideal situation to work with, but we made it happen. Uh, this this was the proposal, and um, I started out with this uh, setting in biogeneric variation about right there. And then all I did was I filled in the spaces, uh, refined the line angles, took care of the minimal thickness, 
Um, and then I took the form tool. Uh, let's go over to the, the form tool. Remove, and I left the strength about right there. You don't want to make it too dramatic because then you lose control. It takes away things too fast. So I left it at about where it's at, 20-ish. And I just went along the incisal edge with that. And then once I got it about where I wanted it, the wear marks that I liked, um, I went in with the smooth version or the smooth tool and just smoothed it out. But yeah, so that's that case. Let's move on. Here's our next case. Um, this one was pretty fun. At first glance, it looks great. You would just think, okay, we did some centrals and, and that's about it. But the doctor did have some specific instructions with this design. And um, it was a bit of an obstacle, but uh, you know, in the end it turned out really nice, the design. But if you look from the occlusal view, you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. And I'll take away these. So our preps, um, they're pretty far back lingually. Um, you know, a little more than you'd like. They're, they're um, further back. So the idea was to bring them more forward. Um, and the doctor was worried or concerned about the facial thickness of the crowns, uh, maybe looking too bulky. Well, you know, the facial can be thick, it's the incisal thickness that you want to worry about. Um, you want to make sure that the incisal edge uh, maintains a nice, thin, dainty form rather than leaving that thick as well with the facial. Um, and also lengthening them to about the same length as the cuspids. That was the other concern. Um, doctor was worried about the function of the teeth. Uh, maybe the length would interfere with the function of the teeth, but it didn't. Um, I, you know, on the lingual, you just leave a nice um, sort of rise and everything's, you know, able to um, function as it should. And you can see here at the incisal, um, it would be easy to not take that into consideration and leave this like, you know, somewhat thicker. But um, yeah, you just, you take the extra step to make these incisal edges more thin. And that way from every angle that you look at it, because you'll usually notice that thickness from the side profile, but every angle that you look at it, um, it looks nice. And as if, you know, these teeth are where, they sp where they're supposed to be and they're natural. Um, another thing with this case is uh, to maintain a symmetric width, there was some overlap on this tooth. You can see it from the lingual especially. Uh, we had to get some overlap um, rather than kind of bringing that distal contour line into contact it's kind of just right there along the contact um, but that's okay you know not everything's perfect the objective of this video is to display kind of just the nitty-gritty daily work that um, that I receive and maybe this is the kind of work that you guys um, are um, faced with on a you know somewhat standard basis a lot of it boils down to managing the patient's expectations um, you know, they, they bring in a photo of Kim Kardashian and say, I want her teeth. But you have to ask that patient, what exactly is it that you like about Kim Kardashian's teeth? It's a beautiful smile, probably more than likely. I haven't studied her teeth all that much, but, um, they just want, they want their teeth to look ideal. But sometimes, you know, simple crown and bridge or, um, a couple veneers isn't going to make, make or break your smile. You can improve it but you're not gonna end up with that ideal smile just from a couple of veneers um, or crowns, let alone veneers. Um, veneers can, uh, can be somewhat limiting because you're left with more of the uh, previous dentition, so you're, you're not as able to um, maneuver things and adjust things uh, with as much freedom as you can with, say, a crown or a three-quarter crown. With veneers, you've got all that tooth structure behind the scenes and with veneers you kind of just have to um, you know make things look good from the facial and I'll show you a couple of those cases so let's dive into one of those while we're on the topic so to pick up where we left off uh, here's a veneer case and as I mentioned before um, when designing a veneer case it can be difficult to have all the freedom that that you would like or all the freedom that may even be necessary when designing a crown when designing a veneer typically 
It's just the facial surface that's prepped. And in my case, as a designer, if you're lucky, um, you'll get some nice interproximal preparation as, uh, as well as bring that margin as subgingival as possible because then you're allowed to create a more natural emergence um, and you have more freedom with uh, the emergence that you'd like. Also, when prepping for uh, serrat cases, uh, it does require a shoulder um, so that you know you can avoid chipping and whatnot and you can create a nice flush marginal area. But with all that being said, um, here's a case where from the facial view, it looks nice. I mean, these look like naturally shaped teeth with nice emergence and whatnot, but it did take quite a bit to get here. And as I mentioned before, when you are designing a veneer, you don't have all the freedom that you'd have when, say, designing a crown because behind those veneers, you've got so much of the previous tooth structure left over that you have to kind of work around that rather than having all the freedom you want, um, say, like with a crown. So behind these doors, behind these veneers, there's a lot going on. And let me take away the restoration so you can see exactly what I mean. And let me put up the pre-op as well. You can see just how rotated these teeth are. They are not in line with an arch at all. Um, so certain preparation requirements um, have to be met in order to make something like this work. And uh, the dentist in this case did do a good job. Um, there are certain things that could have been done different, but overall we were able to accomplish what we needed to accomplish. So let me put the restorations back up and I'll kind of uh, make them more transparent. See, ideally this, um, if you can follow my cursor, this margin right here, the distal margin of uh, number eight, it would be better if that were a little more lingual on the lingual side so that all of this area um, you can manipulate and um, that would have allowed us to create a thicker, um, a thicker lingual because right here it's, it is pretty thin. Um, but it is within the minimal thickness um, requirements, fortunately. But you could also see right here that it is thin in this area, and then on the mesial, you've got it really thick. And that's because we're trying to realign things while maintaining that previous tooth structure um, on the lingual. So um, you can run into some obstacles here, but overall, we were able to achieve what we needed to achieve. Um, even if, you know, say from the back, it's not the most appealing thing. The objective is from the front and even the side profile. This looks um, natural and nice, uh, nice and aesthetic. Um, but yeah, um, just wanted to touch up on that. And, uh, you know, veneers can be difficult to design, especially with the Cerex software, but um, they are doable. And this is just another example of kind of your everyday sort of case. Um, it's less than ideal, but this is your bread and butter. This is the nitty gritty stuff that, you know, maybe people aren't showing it off. But I mean, they, doing something uh, like this, it honestly does require more work than, you know, taking taking on a case that's already ideal. I mean, it's already set up for you to make an ideal design. You know, the teeth are properly spread out. They're all in line. Um, they've got enough reduction, there's a nice shoulder, it's all those things. If you can get all those, then you've got an easy case ahead of you. And to me, that's not as impressive as something like this, where you're really, you know, just trying to make something out of nothing. And, um, you know, I think that this is a, this is a great, great case or a great example of really making something out of, out of, you know, not necessarily nothing because the preps were, um, adequate, especially given what the dentist had to work with, but um, it was difficult nonetheless. So uh, I am going to show you a couple more of these, and then that I'll just about wrap it up. But I hope that you know you guys have gotten something out of this. Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you will encounter um, more frequently than those ideal cases. So there's actually a lot more to learn from these types of cases. So for this case, I first want to show the, well, it's not necessarily the pre-op, but here are the temps that we had to work with. Um, this patient just wanted an aesthetic improvement. Uh, previously, their um, anterior teeth were kind of worn down, 
and kind of had that reverse smile appearance. You know, the mesials of the centrals were, say, shorter than the distals of the central and so on. Um, there's somewhat of a V right here, upside down V. But uh, yeah, so these are the temps that we had to work with. And from the front, they just look, you know, pretty um, blocky, I guess you could say. Nothing, nothing about them is um, going to represent the permanent uh, restorations. But with that being said, um, this patient's expectations were well managed. Um, you can see from these preps just kind of how like far these uh, these preps stick out. Um, and you can get an idea of kind of that reverse V that they previously had. So this patient is expecting, you know, something a, a, along the lines of this temporary. And you could see that this incisal edge is really thick because the preps stick out so far, but you also want to maintain a nice incisal edge. So, um, you know, the facial is also thick. Uh, there's a lot of improvement to be made, but also there's a lot that could limit um, the improvements that can be made. However, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way this design turned out. This is what we ended up with. And uh, the objective was to not reference the temporaries for any sort of final design or shape but to use the temporaries as a guide for the length so that um, because those temporaries were made for this patient's function, um, this patient's occlusion, um, anything longer may interfere with the function of the teeth, but um, we left the length. Um, maybe the centrals are a little bit longer, but it's nothing too dramatic, and uh, I think that there was a little bit of wiggle room, but you can see just how much thickness we were able to remove like right here in this lateral, this lateral, as well as the centrals, you can see how much thickness we were able to actually um, remove from the temporaries. And again, these are just temporaries, but um, I think this patient's gonna be really thrilled after the dentist mills these um, designs and gets them in the mouth. Then you could also see on, from the lingual side too, we didn't have that much thickness. Um, except for on the laterals maybe, but the incisal edges remain nice and um, fine. And there was a little bit of an area to close right here. You could see how kind of the mesial, this cusp, it's cut off somewhat. So we brought back that contact from the lingual. And same thing over here. Um, we brought the contact back from the lingual. This cusp is also sort of, so it appears like it's almost cut in half, but I mean, I'm sure that's not the case, but Point is, from the facial, this turned out really nice. Um, and this, again, is another one of those cases that you may encounter um, as a designer or even as a dentist. Um, you may be limited with the type of prep that you can do. Um, so there are always challenges, but it's always a good feeling when you can um, really make something out of nothing or uh, exceed expectations. It's quite rewarding. In fact, it's more rewarding than when you make something um, perfect, but you were given um, an ideal scenario. The preps were amazing. The previous dentition allowed for um, really nice tooth form and anatomy, but it's these types of cases that really change the lives of people because um, this patient probably isn't expecting much um, to be uh, honest, but uh, once these are in the mouth and the dentist gets everything milled out in the mouth, I think this patient's going to be absolutely thrilled. So I've got one more case to show you guys, and then that ought to, uh, that should wrap up this video. But um, stay tuned. So I'm going to close out the video with this case. Uh, it's a four-unit anterior veneer case. Um, I had the privilege to design this for a Seric user. Send them the designs back. They milled it. But it was a difficult one, and um, as previously discussed, uh, from the facial and from even from the side profile, this design looks like it's a home run and it's ready to go. But there is a lot going on behind the scenes, and I will just touch up on a couple of things that could have made this design a bit easier, but honestly may have not even changed all that much with the end result. Um, but as you'll notice, there's a 
there's a pretty large diastema here. Um, and with a veneer, something that's primarily prepped on the facial, it, it is difficult to close that up because typically you're going to want to close that up from the lingual. Um, you want to bring it in from the back so that the distal contour line can kind of um, hide uh, all the width. But that wasn't the case. I, so that would have been, I guess, the only thing that um, I would change about this prep design is I would have brought this margin back just a little bit more to allow for more um, uh, maneuverability or manipulation right here on this distal area. And same thing over here, but um, you could also see the diastema that was right here. Um, unfortunately, with something like this, you can't fill in the black triangle entirely. Only thing that could have fixed that is um, bringing this margin back a little bit more. But other than that, um, that should just about wrap up this video. This is another one of those cases. It's not something to show it off to the world, but it did turn out nice. Um, I'm sure it's going to look really nice in the mouth, but it's nothing to um, run home about. It is just your daily bread and butter kind of the deal, but it did turn out really good. So anyways, if you guys have any questions for this video, I know it may be long. Um, I hope that you got something out of it, but if you do have any questions and I didn't touch up on anything um, that you'd like me to elaborate on, please feel free to comment or message me directly. Uh, if uh, we're in contact pretty frequently, you have my number, shoot me a text or call me next time um, a design is sent my way. Um, for any for any prep advice or anything that I may need on my end when I'm designing a case for you. But um, with that being said, thanks for tuning in, and I'll talk to you guys later.